Faith is the prime point in Buddhist practice. Without unwavering faith, one cannot fully experience the benefits of chanting Dai Moku, Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, or see improvements in one's circumstances. As Nichiren Daishonin himself stated, never seek this Gohanzen outside yourself. The Gohanzen exists only within the mortal flesh of us ordinary people who embrace the Lotus Sutra and chant Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. This indicates that faith in the mystic law and in one's own Buddhahood is paramount. Chanting Dai Moku must come first before all else. When confronted with difficulties, many may be tempted to chant half-heartedly, assuming problems will somehow resolve themselves automatically. However, Nichiren cautioned against such nonchalant attitudes, instead urging his followers to take the matter seriously, pray to the Gohanzen to change poison into medicine, and courageously challenge your problem. With earnest prayer focused squarely on the Gohanzen, wisdom and energy emerge from within, empowering one to overcome any adversity. No matter the situation, do not become preoccupied with methods and means. Rather, uphold faith in Daimoku first, employing it as the bedrock for determining the most fitting solution. This singular focus represents the crux of Nichiren Buddhism. Human nature gravitates toward comfort and avoiding hardship. But as Nichiren imparted, one can only train and improve himself through struggle and effort. The devoted must chant persistently despite circumstances. When fortune arrives, humbly credit the Gohanzen and offer thanks through Dai Moku. When misfortune strikes, recognize chanting as the sole means of fundamental change. With such unwavering faith sustained over years, even decades, desires shall naturally be fulfilled as long as one maintains the mindset of Gohanzen first and Dai Moku first. Nichiren stated that without devils, the efficacy of the Lotus Sutra could not be proven. These devils represent the destructive tendencies within all life that seek to undermine faith via obstruction. But because their nature is concealed, earnest prayer is requisite for bringing them to light and conquering them. Shakyamuni battled Devadatta's schemes, just as Nichiren was persecuted by Hei no Saman. But rather than literal demons, these figures embodied the devilish functions inside the human heart which lead people astray. Through resolute faith, we can detect and defeat such inner demons. As Nichiren proclaimed, many evil forces are vanquished by a single great truth. No devilish influence can overpower the protective force of the Gohanzen for those who chant with indomitable conviction. When providing guidance, caution must be taken to avoid focusing solely on surface problems. As Nichiren taught, Buddhism is like the body and society is like the shadow. When the body is crooked, so is the shadow. Faith forms the body, dilemmas the shadow. Correcting faith must therefore take precedence before addressing issues. And when privy to confidential information, never betray another's trust through careless disclosure. Respecting privacy demonstrates wisdom and compassion. Some praise Buddhism's profundity yet neglect personal practice. But theory alone cannot sustain faith, as Nichiren warned that true faith manifests through practice. If action is postponed until conditions seem ripe, nothing will be accomplished. An analogy can be drawn to one who refuses to enter water until first learning to swim. Only by determinedly plunging in and struggling to stay afloat with aid does one eventually swim skillfully. Willingness to practice springs not from coercion, but from perceiving Buddhism's necessity for happiness. When recognized as vital, doubt dissolves. Suppose a child falls into deep water. No one would stand idle owing to inconvenience or discomfort. They would unhesitatingly jump in to save the drowning youth. Likewise, when realizing faith's imperative role in your life, hesitation disappears and you embrace practice. Chant earnestly to the Gohanzen first and foremost. Conviction and activities will follow, along with an irrepressible urge to pursue them diligently. Even when daily affairs preclude normal participation, resolve to make time on occasion. And always seek reports from fellow members. With wholehearted willingness, time can be carved out for the sake of faith. Some proclaim an inability to lead others to Buddhism. 
but the very reason for chanting is to develop that capacity. If propagation were effortless, Kosen Rufu would already be fulfilled. Shikubuku is arduous because most find Buddhism elusive initially. Those closely connected sometimes cannot communicate effectively, let alone strangers. But instead of complaint when confronted with indifference, redouble efforts in Dai Moku. The greater the challenge, the greater the victory that ensues. Discussion meetings offer members the courage to voice ideas benefiting all. Treasure each contribution, as something you hear may galvanize your own development. True contribution means becoming indispensable to your chapter, workplace, and family. Like the poor woman's lamp, even meager offerings outshine extravagant gestures when sustained by earnest faith. Some members cite scarce time and money as impediments to activities. Yet no circumstance justifies neglecting the mission for Kosen Rufu. Find minutes to devote, that you may accumulate fortune for your future. Robust life force is essential for triumph. When strong, the greatest troubles become nutrients for growth, like wheat rising ever stouter when crushed underfoot. Though the Buddha nature resides in all, without proper influences its sprouting is impossible. Lacking careful nurturing, the seed of Buddhahood cannot blossom or bear fruit. Take the long view of faith. Abandoning practice over transient matters betrays only yourself. Upholding faith throughout life brings supreme joy and contentment. Never blame circumstances for lax practice. Instead, chant Dai Moku first to fortify yourself, thereby using problems as springboards for advancement. Become flexible yet firm like bamboo, bending but never breaking. The journey of faith has many peaks and valleys. But by determinedly chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo first and foremost, you can withstand the tempests of life and reveal your innate Buddhahood. No other practice or philosophy rivals the power activated through wholeheartedly embracing the mystic law. Make Dai Moku your fundamental support, and you will develop the wisdom, compassion, and courage to conquer the demons of doubt and transform destiny. When faced with questions or vexations, return to the prime point of chanting and center yourself in the rhythmic resonance of Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. All answers will then readily emerge from within. Chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo is easy yet profoundly rewarding when approached with focused faith and determination. As Nichiren Daishonin affirmed, exert yourself in the two ways of practice and study. Without practice and study, there can be no Buddhism. Beyond consistent chanting, study of Nichiren's writings and doctrines is crucial for deepening one's practice. Through studying the Gosho, insights arise that allow seemingly abstract Buddhist concepts to take concrete form in daily life. Nichiren stressed that believers must never seek the Gohonzon outside of their own lives. Enlightenment emerges from within, not through external forces. He chided those who vainly chased after supernatural signs and occurrences, stating, do not look for marvels outside yourself. The pure land is not to be found in the heavens above or in the midst of the sea. To find it within yourself is the way. Through profound yet ordinary acts like chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, the infinite wisdom of the universe surfaces within ordinary individuals. While faith may seem like a solitary journey at times, community support accelerates development. As Nichiren taught, if one goes astray, many will follow. If one follows the true path, many will attain Buddhahood. Surrounding yourself with positive influences facilitates growth. Isolation sows the seeds for confusion and discouragement to take root. Humans are social creatures yearning for acceptance and understanding. The Sangha, or community of fellow believers, offers encouragement and guidance so one does not lose their way on the path to enlightenment. Chanting and studying in solitude has value but must be balanced with communal assembly, discussion, and activism. We support and strengthen each other like pillars in a soaring temple. Nichiren himself demonstrated this through steadfastly encouraging his followers. He uplifted them from depths of agony and fortified them to weather tremendous persecutions during an era of upheaval and uncertainty in 13th century Japan. We must learn from his peerless example. 
While Nichiren Buddhism encourages independent progress, it recognizes that lasting happiness unfolds through compassionately leading others to the law. Establishing meaningful connections based on open communication, trust, and empathy is paramount. But taking action also matters. We must create value in society through positive contributions in the environment we occupy at work, at home, and in our neighborhoods. By living with earnest purpose, we ignite our human revolution. Obstructing influences will arise. But remember that diamond-like faith is imperishable, as Nichiren taught. Hardships should inspire us to fortify our practice. The journey of faith mimics the natural world's perpetual cycles. Day transitions into night, and night back into day endlessly. Seasons revolve from spring to summer to autumn and winter perpetually. As Buddhists, we chant Nam Myoho Renge Kyo through all seasons and phases of existence. Through periods of darkness and cold, we maintain the resplendent inner light kindled by Dai Moku. Faith persists like the eternal revolution of days and seasons. By tenaciously focusing on the practice of chanting first, studying Nichiren's teachings, bonding with our community, and taking actions that make a difference, we develop our potential. The purpose of faith is not passively waiting for fulfillment. As we elevate ourselves, we elevate others and our environment. The mystic law is actively practiced, not contemplated. It is the wellspring of enlightenment from which we can draw wisdom, compassion, and courage. As we tap this infinite inner reservoir through chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, happiness unfolds.